Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Chabura Public Shiur. Today, we have the privilege of having with us Dayan Ofer Livnat, uh, and we're going to be exploring different approaches to fundamental questions about Tehillim, such as authorship, the presence of Nevoa, and so on. Personally, I'm very excited for this topic, and uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you, everyone, who's going to be listening afterwards. Uh, Chacham, thank you so much for being with us, and the floor is yours. And I think we lost them. Officially, he is still on, but he seems stuck. Here we are. Yeah, apologies. Yeah, my internet's not so great. Okay, all right. You can get started. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, very good. So tonight, I want to deal with. Um, I saw there were a lot of questions in the last year about. Um, I mean, I understand why those questions rose up because we we learned the parak of Tehillim. Um, which might seem appropriate to more later parts of Jewish history, but not so much to the early Tanakh period. And people rightfully asked me, uh, who was this written by? When when was it written? What is the time period, the time frame of the Mizmo? So that raises really a fundamental question in general regarding Tehillim. Um, and it raises several questions, which are all connected uh, one to each other, as we will see. It raises a question of who authored Sefer Tehillim? When and it also ties in is there prophecy in Sefer Tehillim? And it also ties into a very fundamental question what really is Sefer Tehillim about? And wh why is that a fundamental question? Because if we think about Tanakh, what is Tanakh in general? Tanakh is Dvar Hashem. What does that mean? That is the word of God to us. That's what predominantly all of Tanakh is about. Uh, the Torah is the word of God to us, the Nevi'im is the word of God to us. It mentions what people said, what people did. I mean, even the Torah itself, we read in the Parashiyot, Abraham said this, Abimelech said this, this person said that, Yaakov, Esav, and all the people they interacted with. But all of that is part of the story, which is told from the perspective of Hashem trying to deliver some sort of a message to us. So even if it mentions the words of man, it's it's only part of the, as, as it plays a role within Dvar uh, Hashem to us, the message that Hashem spe uh, speaks to us. But Sefer Tehillim, at least on face value, seems to be the reverse. It seems to be the word of man to Hashem. And the question is, is that really the case? And if that's the case, then how does that fit in with the rest of Tanakh, which is really the word of uh, Hashem to man? So that's the that's sort of the most fundamental question. But it all, as we will see, it also ties into the question of uh, who authored Sefer Tehillim. So maybe just let's let's try and uh, see what uh, uh, public opinion is on this question. Uh, the people here in the sh this year, if you can write to me in the chat box, who wrote Sefer Tehillim? Who authored Sefer Tehillim? What's the first thing that comes to mind? Who wants to give it a shot? We have David. Okay, everybody agree with that? Other answers? Felipe, David. That's it. Only David. Any other anybody else possibly other than David or in addition other than David or in addition to David? Ah, there we go. Korach. You mean Korach or you mean uh Bnei Korach? Yes, B'nai Korach, apparently. Various authors, Asaf, Asaf, very good. Initially by David, we know some other, we attribute to others. Esther, ooh, very nice. Why do you say Esther? 
who has said it's the Warren. Very good. Excellent. Okay, so everybody initially said David, and we know there's good reason to say David. First of all, it's it's seemingly what we always think of. We always are taught that uh, the Tilim was composed by uh, David and Melech. And besides that, David names Mirot Israel. And besides that, a great a great number of Mizmorim in Tihilim have David at the title head. Mizmo le David, le David Mizmo. A lot of them even have certain tied into events in David and Melech's life, like le David uh, you have all kinds of uh, many, many titles that are even pinpointed to specific uh, episodes in David Amelech's uh, life. So certainly, David seems to have written a great deal of Sefer TV. However, other no others noted that we have quite a few other people mentioned in the title head of uh, Tihilim. We have, uh, for example, Bnei Korach. Now, Bnei Korach, the question is who that is. It could be Bnei Korach, the sons of Korach that were in the Korach that were in the times of the Tanakh. It could be Bnei Korach, much later descendants who were Livi'im. So that seems to make sense. They would have involvement in Tilim. The Livi'im, we know they're, they're in charge of songs. We have other people mentioned, like Asaf, like Yedutun, Limane Ezrachi. We even have, I think, uh, I think at least two uh, uh, Pirkei Tilim that are considered Lishlomo, that so it seems to be Shlomo is mentioned in the title head. We have Tfilah Moshe Isha Elohim, so we have uh, that we say uh, usually on Shabbat morning. Um, so it seems that we even have something by Moshe Rabbeinu possibly. So it seems that there are quite a few authors to Sefer Tilim. Now let me ask you something. Is there any uh, Mizmorim that might indicate that they had to be authored by somebody from a much later time than David. Anybody have an, uh, an, uh, an idea? You can also speak up. You don't have to. Oh, very good. Robert wrote, I don't know what I did. I don't know what I did. It's one of the classic ones. Okay, it's not the only one where this question arises, but it's perhaps the most striking. Right? al Nawot Bavel is a mizmo that some people say um, instead of uh, during the week before Birkat Amazon, instead of Shira Malot, which we say on Shabbat. And it says there, al Nawot Bavel, Sham Yashav Nugam Bachrinu Bezochreinu Etzion. So it seems to be talking about people who were in the first exile, a much, much later time period uh, than David Hamilich. Um, so that's a question. Was it authored, seemingly the simple reading of the Bismo, that it was authored by some Levi'im who were sitting in Bavel and lamenting uh, the exile and reminiscing about the times that Sham Yashavnu Gam Bachinu Bezochreinu Etzion Al Aravim Betochat Kalinu Kinoroteinu that they're lamenting, that they're, they've hung up their, their uh, instruments that used to serve in the Beit HaMikdash. On the other hand, you could argue that perhaps it was written at an earlier time period by somebody who was prophesizing about uh, the destruction. Okay, So you see here how the question of authorship, in other words, if you claim that, as we will see, some do claim that the, all of the Tehillim were finished, completely authored, uh, by the time of David and Melech, um, then you would have to argue that that was said in a sort of prophecy. Okay, so that that's what I'm trying to say, that the question of authorship also affects the question of how you understand Sefer Tehillim. Is it prophetic, like the rest of Tanakh? Or is it what we call sort of man-inspired and saying Tfilot, you know, from his own uh, contemporary experiences? Okay, so on the question of authorship, we will see it's not a simple question. It's not a simple question. There are quite a few opinions on this issue. And even within Chazal, uh, we will see that there are several opinions. So what we'll do is as follows. We'll we'll see what Chazal say on this question. And then afterwards, we'll go into a few opinions in the Rishonim that discussed it, like Rav Sadia Gaon, the Ibn Ezra, 
and, and a few others, and we'll, we'll try from there to, to carry on to some of the other questions that we raised. Okay, so let's first of all take a look at what Chazan had to say about this. And normally, when we think about, um, you know, who authored what, according to Chazan, the place we will go to um, is a Gemara in Masechet Baba Batra, which goes through their many books in Tanakh and who, who wrote which one. So here on, the, on some source pages I have here, in Masechet Baba Batra, it says as follows, David Katav, Sefer Tehilim, um, Al Yedei Asaraz Kenim, in other words, David wrote Sefer Tehilim, but he, yeah, oh, Robert, you want to ask something? Go ahead. Well, like I sort of asked in the chat that if you, if you say on the Bavel was prophetic, and if we say that, you know, the bad things, we can always uh, do chupa and they won't happen, it's kind of gets a bit difficult because now the Navi has said, you know, we're going to be in exile. We're not going to do, we have, you know, it feels like our opportunity to chupa is gone, if you, if you see what I mean. If that, if yeah, well, I mean, that, that's maybe the classical question about all of prophecy, you know, what the Rambam discusses in Yipot <clears throat> I mean, you have uh, you have clearly True. other Nadim prophesizing about the Chuban, so... Uh, any, any neg it's, a, it's a question of any negative prophecy. <clears throat> yes. yes, but okay, I mean, we have lots yeah. of prophecies about the Chuban, about this, about the exile. Okay, no, fair enough, all right, so I... Uh, yeah, the it, question it's is... more general, general question, question then. So. Yeah, but the question specifically, the question... Uh, all the rest of Tanakh, we can have prophecy, and then we can, you know, the you know, think about the philosophical questions that it raises. But Sefer Tili, you read Al Narot Bavel, and it, you know, resonates with you as if somebody is really, you know, describing their own personal experience. So regarding that, it's a little more difficult to say that it's prophetic. But we will see that some will argue that make that argument um, because of the question of authorship and when Sefer Tili was composed. Um, okay, back in the let's go back to Chazar. So, uh, says as follows David Katav Sefer Tilim Aledea Saraz Kenim. In other words, David wrote Sefer Tilim, but he used in Sefer Tilim the words of Ten Zkenim. Okay, who are these Ten Zkenim? Aledea Dama Rishon, Aledea Malki Tzedek, Aledea Avraham. So the Gemara here mentions 10 other people. In other words, David himself is not one of the 10. Um, if you count them, Adam Arishon, 1, Malki Tzedek, 2, Abraham, 3, Moshe, 4, Heyman, 5, Yedudutun, 6, Asaf, 7, and Shlosha Bnei Koch, 3 sons of Koch, that's 10. So David is not one of the 10, according to the Gemara Babatra, but rather, he used words of ten zkenim that preceded him. You can see here Rashi says, "Katav bo dvarim shamruz zkenim halalu shayu lefanav veyesh shayu biyamav kegon asaf veiman vidutun min alavim amshorim." So it was either people that preceded him, like Adam Arishon, Malki Tzedek. I mean, these uh, Malki Tzedek is mentioned in Sefer Bereshit in his encounters with uh, Abraham, uh, Abraham himself, Moshe, very early people. And also contemporaries of David who were Levi'im and also composed. And here Rashi goes through uh, the different who was said by whom. So Adam Rishon, Chazar referring to Yidim Kuflametet, Golmi Raui Necha, that it's, uh, it was composed by Adam Rishon. Malki Tzedek, we have a Mizmor where it's attributed to him. Abraham, that's the Mizmor uh, where it's, which is attributed to Itan Ezrahi. So uh, according to Chazar, that's Abraham. Moshe, we know it's Tfilan Moshe. And all the rest, Heiman, Yedutun, Asaf, and Bnei Korach, um, they were all um, all mentions in the titles to to uh, to Mizmori. So according to the Gemaran Barabatra, we see that really Sefer Tehilim was completed by David. In other words, he wasn't the only one that authored. He used uh, Mizmori that were composed by some people that preceded him and some contemporaries of him, but nothing later. Okay, the Gemara Bavata doesn't indicate the possibility of somebody later than David uh, composing Sefer Tehidim. Rather, David was sort of the main composer and editor of Sefer Tehidim, but he also incorporated 
some stuff, a bit of stuff from other people as well. Um, Tosfot here brings that there is another Girsa in the Gemara, and that is Shlomo. Um, that Shlomo is also one of the ten skinim used by uh, used in Sefer Tiyidim. So if, and again, the reason why to put in Shlomo as well, because we have at least, I think, two Mizmorim which have Shlomo in the title head. So Tosfot says, how do you get to 10 if you add Shlomo? So he says, Lefi ha-sfarim, degar si Shlomo, tzrech lomar, de asaf, hava mishlosha b'nei korach, vu avi asaf. So according to that, we can take asaf and say that he was one of the three b'nei korach, and he's also the the one of the asaf, and and uh, we'll we'll still keep the number at ten. Okay, fine. But in here's the interesting point. The mentor Swat asks, "Vim tomar ulehanu de lo gar silei amai lo chashiv lei haktiv le shlomo elohim ishpatecha le melachten." Right. According to the uh, year said that we have in the Gemara that does not list Shlomo as one of the authors, what do we do with Tilim Einbet, which seems to have been attributed to Shlomo? It says there in the title had be Shlomo. So Tosfot answers, Okay, so Tosfot answers, it could be that it was also composed by David. But when it says in the title, Lishlomo, Shlomo is not the author of the Mizmo, but rather it was a prayer said by David in regarding to his son Shlomo. Okay, but basically what comes out according to the Gemara Baba Bata is as we said, that... It basically, the composition of Sefer Tidim ended with David. David wasn't the only one who composed, but he was the one that completed it. So it raises a possibility of a bit carrying on just a bit beyond David into his son Shlomo. But according to the Gilsa that we have, the version that we have in the Gemara, not even that. And anything later than David, even Shlomo Melech, we have to explain as a reference of a prayer said in regarding to Shlomo, but not that Shlomo actually composed anything. Okay, that's one approach that we have in Chazal, that basically Sefer Tilim, uh, although we have a few authors, it was completed by David Hamid. We have a different opinion, though, in Chazal. That's not the only opinion that we have in Chazal. The other opinion is in Shir Hashirim Rabba, the Midrash on Shir Hashirim. And this is on the verse in Shir Hashirim where it says, Banui letalpiyot. So the Midrash here says as follows, very interesting. In other words, Banui Letal Piyot is Piyot. Piyot is plural of Pe, of mouse. So many, it's the book that was said by many mouths. In other words, by many people. Okay, and who are they? So again, we see that Chazal had this tradition that Sefer Tilim was said by 10 people. But here they have a different list of who these 10 people were. In other words, they have some sort of tradition that there were 10 composers, the Sefer Tidim, but it's not clear who they were. So the Midrash says as follows. Adam Rishon, Avraham, Moshe, David, Shlomo, al eilen chamisha lo itpalgu. In other words, everybody agrees that five out of the 10 are Adam Rishon, right? As we saw, there is one Mizmo and Tidim which Chazal attributed to Adam Rishon, also Abraham, that's the Mizmor of Eitan HaEzrachi. Moshe, we know, Tfilan Moshe Yishayim. David, David, according to this Midrash, is one of the ten. According to the Gemara in Barra Batra, David is not one of the ten. Um, uh, somebody's asking, assuming they were around before David's time, do we know who Heyman and Dutun were? If I'm not mistaken, I didn't look this up now, but I have some recollection that Heyman and Yidutun are actually mentioned in Divrei Hayamim. Um, you know what? Let me just run a quick search to verify that. But I think they, they are mentioned in Divrei Hayamim. We do have some evidence as to who they were. Yeah, we have a man uh, listed in Divya Yamim as Levi'im that were serving in the times of uh, of David HaMelech, and I think for Yedutun as well. Uh, 
Yeah, Yedutun is also mentioned in in Divrei Hayamim in, amongst the uh, Leviim. Okay, so that's a good question. But uh, Iman and Yedutun are um, there is some evidence in Tanakh that you know they were contemporaries of Leviim in the times of the David. Okay, but um, okay, so that's that's the. So again, we said the five that everybody agrees they were the composers are Adam Rishon, Abraham, Moshe, David, and Shlomo. Okay, I'm, I'm highlighting this as an important point, I think, that according to this Midrash, David is one of the ten. According to the Gemara and Baba Batra, David is not one of the ten. David, he, he is Sefer Tigrim. He just, the, the, the tradition of ten, according to the Gemara and Baba Batra, is ten other than David, that David incorporated their words into his own book of Sefer Tigrim. But according to this Midrash, David is simply one of the ten. And then who are the other five? Rav and Rabbi Yochanan. There is a dispute between Rav and Rabbi Yochanan. Rav Amar Asaf Vehiman Vehidutun Vishlosha Bnei Koach Veizra. Okay, so he's counting them as follows: Asaf Vehiman Yedutun Shlosha Bnei Koach. He counts them as one. And Ezra. unbelievable. He's jumping far, far away in history, all the way to Ezra. Was already in the times of uh, Beit Shani of the Second Temple, okay. And Rabbi Yochanan Amar Asaf the Iman veidutu nechad u'shlosha bnei Korach echad veEzra. Al dat Rav ein Asaf bechal bnei Korach al dat Rabbi Yochanan Asaf dehacha u'Asaf detaman. Okay, so there's a, a, a specific dispute here exactly how to count. Um, Asaf and uh, okay, we won't get into that. But the the main point I want to take from this midrash is that they don't stop the composition of Tehilim at David at the times of the David, but rather it extends way beyond even to Ezra. Okay, and then the midrash says later on, Rabbi Huna b'shem Rabbi Acha Afal Tisha Sarab Bnei Adam Amru Sefer Tehilim Mikul Hon Lo Nemar Shmotam Ela Al Yedei David Melech Yisrael. Okay, in other words, that even though it was said by 10 different people, so it wasn't just David HaMelech, but sort of we call it after David because the, the Midrash here says that's the part which is most um, pleasing before Hashem, David HaMelech, who is Naim Zemirot Yisrael. Okay, but there's this, I think according to this, it comes out as follows. According Again, according to the Gemara Baba Batra, David basically completed Sefer Tehidim, but he used 10 other people, incorporated their Mizmorim as well within his book. According to the Midrash and Shira Shirim, David is just one of the ten. He might be the most prominent of the ten, and that's why sort of Sefer Tidim is is known after him. But it extends also beyond David. It extends first of all to Shlomo his son, and even all the way to Ezra. Okay, so if it's Ezra, then we can understand Mizmorim and like Al Naharot Bavid, which seem to be talking about after the exile. Okay, it's not the only one. There are other, there, there are other, I'll mention something very interesting later on about it, but there are other places in Tehillim as well, which seem to be talking about events which are much later in history. So according to the Midrash and Shira Shirim Rabbah, that's fine. We have comp the composition of Tehillim extended all the way until the times of the, the Second Temple. So we can probably explain most of those cases as composed by somebody much later on. As opposed to the Gemaran Baba Batra, that says it was all completed by David, we would have to view anything like al Narot Bavel or anything similar to that, that it was done, like Tosfot says, when it says Shlomo, it means that David was praying on Shlomo. So we have to say that it was said in prophecy for the future. Like, let me give you another example. The Mizmo that we say every Shabbat, Shira Ma'alot, B'Shuv Hashem et Shiva Tzion Ha'inu Kecholmim. That's somewhat of a prophetic mizmor, which is speaking about, it's like a song that was written for when there will be uh, the redemption. So you could say that it's somebody who is viewing the redemption in the future, and he's already composing a song about that. Or if you want to say that it's somebody experiencing redemption, then you could say... That's written by somebody like Ezra Sofer, who saw redemption in his time. So he saw, Hashem et Zion, when Hashem returned the people to Tzivat Zion, we were like dreamers. Okay? So according to the Gemara, 
Baba Bakra, we would have to say that it's somebody who has a vision of what it will be like when Hashem will return the people of Zion, and he's already composing a song for that time. As opposed to the Gemara, the Midrash, as we could say, it was actually composed by somebody who experienced the experience of Shivat Zion, of the return to Zion, and, and composed, you know, from, you know, his experience from what he saw. Okay, so that's that's the two, I think, approaches that we have in Chazar. Let's go on to see uh, the uh, the bit of the Rishonim. The earliest one that we have, I think the earliest one, at least that I'm aware of, that addressed the, the question of authorship of Sefer Tidim, and also some fundamental questions regarding Sefer Tidim, is Rav Sadia Gaon. Rav Sadia Gaon, we have one of the most prominent Geonim, of course. He wrote a commentary on Sefer Tidim, but before the commentary of Sefer Tidim, he has an introduction to Sefer Tidim, and we actually have available to us three introductions of Rav Sadia Gaon to Sefer Tidim. They were written in Arabic, but translated to Hebrew. And he has a long introduction. He has a, um, a short introduction. And then he has a third introduction, which is really very, very brief. So we'll see a bit of the short introduction where he says, you know, his main view in a concise. And in the long introduction, I also quote a little bit from the long introduction where there he really goes into very much detail about his opinion on Sefer Tidim. And his opinion is quite radical. And it's not like Chazal. He has a different opinion regarding who authored Sefer Tidim. And he has a very, very unique opinion regarding uh, what the purpose of Sefer Tidim is. Okay. So without any further ado, let's move on to Rav Sadiagon. Okay, so Rav Sadiagon says as follows. Um, let's start, first of all, with something from the long introduction regarding who composed Sefer Tirim. And he says... As follows, the Chenitan Sefer Zebizmanze or the Fichach Kranu Sefer Tilim, Lee Fihu Shehu Shir Miuchad, the Anashim Yuchadim, the Makom Yuchad, the Kelim Yuchadim, the Ginot Mirodot Moshe Avair. In other words, what Absagion says is that Sefer Tilim, each Mizmon Sefer Tilim, is designed for to be recited by specific people in a specific place with specific instruments with a specific song. Okay. And he says as follows: When he turned the Bchira Melachim David and Avi Alav Shalom Asher Nivchar, like Moshe Neimar, by Matzati David Avdi at Sof Parasha Lecholech Pirtein Yonah. So he says it was composed by David Melech from when he began to prophesy. And he points out here, I'm just skipping a bit, that we have many Mizmorim that were said at different time periods of David Melech's life: Biotob and Apila, the Chosat of Lishtim Bagad, the Vod Vegami. Again, these are all in the titles uh, of Sefer Tilim. Um, but what he says here is that kol ha-sefer nevu'a shenitna'a ba'abo be-david l'fi she-kol ha-uma be-da'a ha-at l'kroto shirei David in other words he says all of Sefer Tilim and its entirety was all given in prophecy okay to David in other words he claims that Sefer Tilim is all prophecy and we will see soon that he is you know, he's he's quite. Uh, that's a very fundamental point, according to Rosh Gon, that all of Sefer Tirim was given in prophecy to David, and David is the only author of Sefer Tirim. Okay, and he says, "The Afar Pisha if Shaul Lachshov sheyesh bo mimashen it nabab or Shaul to Zulat David, kegon asaf veiman vidutun veitanu Moshe Yisraelim Zulatam." So you might think, <laughs> and it's not you might think; it's also Chazal think this. That there are other authors to Sefer Tilim, like all the people other than David mentioned in the titles, like Asaf, Iman Yedutun. He says that's not, that's a mistake. So he says, That's not correct. He says, There's nothing in Tilim which is not from David. Every single Mizmo in Tilim is from David. In other words, sometimes we have a Mizmo Tilim that mentions two people in the title. Leidutun, it mentions both Yudutun and David. 
So who is it? Is it Yidutun or David? Or it says, Yidutun Lasaf Mizvo. So who's the author? Is it Yidutun or is it Asaf? Okay, and he says it doesn't make sense that there would be two authors. Okay, he goes at length for that. So rather, what is his conclusion? Um, after he rejects the possibility that it was composed in joint by David and Yudutun, let's say. Um, so he says as follows. Um, so he says, V'chevan sh'davar zemin advarim abrurim, הרי לא צורף ידותון עם דוד במקצת הציונים, אלא כדי לשמיענו שאותו המזמור נדועה דוד, וידותון מינוי הוא שנתמנה עליו. In other words, so what Rav Sagion says is as follows, really, the mizmor was composed by David, as a prophecy given to David. Why is Yudutun mentioned? Because Yudutun was the one that was in charge of singing this mizmor. Okay? ועל שיתוף Yudutun עם אסף ובני כוח ואימן, הרי כל המשתתפים בציון אותו המזמור רואים אותו ושרים אותו יחד. In other words, any other people that are mentioned in the title, they were the Leviim that were in charge of singing that specific mizmor. So now you'll tell me, well, what about Filale Moshe Isha Elohim? Right, that's Moshe Rabbeinu. Uh, he couldn't, he wasn't around in the times of David HaMelech. So he says, He says that Moshe is not Moshe, but rather Moshe is the descendants of Moshe, that they were Leviim in the times of the David HaMelech, and they were charged with singing this Mizmo. Okay? And he goes at length to say this, but basically, according to Rav, and he says, um, what does it mean, let's say, for example, where it says Shlomo? He said, what about the Mizmo that seems to have been composed by Shlomo? So the Rav Sadia says, no. That's a prophecy regarding Shlomo. So basically, what comes out according to Rav Sadia on this follows. Everything in Sefer Tehidim was all composed by David, was given by a prophecy to David. All, nearly everybody else that's mentioned David, David in the titles of Sefer Tilim, they were all Leviim that were given the task of singing these specific songs. So that's Bnei Korach, that's Yidutun, that's Iman, Moshe is not Moshe, it's the descendants of Moshe. They were the Leviim charged with singing these songs. And if you have somebody who's not a Levi, like Shlomo, then it's a prophecy said by David regarding Shlomo. Okay, that's the opinion of Rav Sadiq. Now, how does he view Sefer Tehilim fundamentally? So he says here in the Yekadama Ktsara, and he says it more at length in the Yekadama Ruka, in the long introduction, <clears throat> but he says as follows. He wants to say that... when we want to teach people or instruct people, we use different forms of communications and we have different forms of expression to try to educate, okay? So he says, just like when we instruct, he says here, I'm just sort of paraphrasing what he says, but he says basically, we use different forms of expression to try to educate. We try to command about doing good, we try to warn from doing bad. Sometimes we'll tell a story about the righteous person, because we want people to emulate the righteous. Some tell, will, will tell a story about the wicked person, so that people will avoid the wicked. We'll sometimes use, as if it's the man speaking to the master, or sometimes we'll use the master speaking to the man, we'll use metaphors. We have all kinds of different expressions, okay? So he says all those different expressions, uh, we can find also in Sefer Tehilim as well. We can find Commands in Sefer Tehilim, like it says, Evu et Hashem kol chasidav, mitchu bechole. We find warnings in Sefer Tehilim. Al tiftuchu be'oshuk be'gazel. He brings here that we have words of the slave speaking to Hashem, like Shimat filati Hashem. But he says we also have words that are coming in Sefer Tehilim that are coming from Hashem to his servant. Ki bi chashach ve'afalteu, ki reini v'neu. So we do have a few psukim and sefer tibim that are sort of said as Hashem, even though maybe he's found a few psukim and sefer tibim that are said as if Hashem is speaking to man, 
clearly they're, they're the minority, maybe 98 or 99 percent of Sefer Tehillim is men speaking to God, and maybe one or two percent, if that at all, uh, is uh, Hashem speaking to men. But he's saying, no, we have all kinds of forms uh, of expression in Sefer Tehillim. Okay? And he says, why do I need to emphasize this? And here's really where he gets to it, and this is unbelievable. He says, ושלום <laughs> ולצריך שנדע שכל אלה מעת השם נוסחו בכל אופני הדיבור הללו נוגעים את בריו. זאת אומרת, do not mistakenly believe that when it says in ספר תהילים, חונני השם, in other words, it's saying, uh, you know, have mercy on me השם, הצילני, save me השם, that it's the words of man to השם. No, it's all words formulated by השם, it's all words formulated by prophecy by השם. Why then does it use these expressions, הצילני השם, as if it's man praying to God, if, if, if these were words formulated by God. It's using these words because it's a form of education. Hashem is educating us that we should call out to Hashem, that Hashem is our Savior. But it's phrasing it as if man is saying it to God. But it's not really man saying it to God. It's God saying to man, but just God is using this expression of man saying to God because it's a good way to, to try to educate us. Okay? And he says, therefore, he says, In other words, when we say in Sefer Tehilim, Hashem Shema Tfilati, right? We call out, Hashem Shema Tfilati, hear our praise. Prayer says, Rav Sadiqon, you should read that as if Hashem is writing to us, I will hear your praise. In other words, Hashem is trying to tell us that he wants to hear, that he will hear our prayers. One way of saying that, He's saying directly, I will hear your I will hear your pray, prayers. But another way of saying it is putting into the words in our mouths, Hashem Shema Filati, but really the message is what's that. Okay, so this is very extreme opinion of Rosat Gon, but he he views that Sefer Tim Lim as a complete prophecy, like any other book in Tanakh. Okay, and anything that appears as if it's formulated by man. That's not the case. It was all formulated by Hashem, given in a nevuah to David HaMelech. And it's just phrased that way because it's another way of getting the message across. Another way of getting the message across that Hashem will hear our prayers, let's say, is by saying Hashem Shimat Filati. Another way of saying that Hashem will save us is Pitseini Vatsileini Biyad That's another way of telling us that Hashem will save us from, you know, our, our enemies. Okay? So that's the opinion of Rosadigon, and he says only one author for Sefer Tidim, David Melech, that's it. Everybody else mentioned there, it's either some Leviim that were in charge of singing of the songs, or in some cases, it's people that David prophesied about, but that's it. He's the only author to Sefer Tidim. Okay, that's the opinion of Rosadigon. Let's see a complete opposite opinion to Rosadigon. And this is an opinion that appears in the uh, introduction to Sefer Tehilim of the Ibn Ezra. Ibn Ezra also has an introduction to Sefer Tehilim. Ibn Ezra, in his con com uh, commentary to Sefer Tehilim, there are several Chachamim that he mentions. He quotes quite a bit of Sadia Gaon, but he also quotes um, another opinion. I think I mentioned him last week, and that is Rabbi Moshe Gikitilia. Rabbi Moshe Gikitilia uh, was an important Chacham in Spain. Even the Rambam mentions him. In others, the Ibn Ezra, he wrote Perushim on Sefer Tehilim, um, and I think some other books of Tanakh. The Ibn Ezra quotes him quite extensively. Sometimes he quotes him by name, Rabbi Moshe. Sometimes he'll just say that somebody said, but it seems to be from uh, the context that he's referring to Rabbi Moshe Gitilia, if you compare it to other cases that he's quoted. Um, there are, I think, a bit of writings of Rabbi Moshe Gitilia that were found in the, um, in the Cairo Gniza, but 
some of them have been published a bit, but there's still out there things that I don't think have been properly researched and published. Again, um, it was written in Arabic as well. So I think it's a worthwhile project for somebody to do one time, hopefully, to, to try to locate all the writings that we do have of his and try to uh, republish them. But like I said, the, the Ibn Ezra does quote him quite a bit. So the Ibn Ezra and his introduction, he first of all starts off, um, he raises the question, and he quotes, first of all, the opinion of the Rav Sadigon. He says, Yesh Omrim, Kol HaSefer LeDavid. Okay, that's the opinion of Rav Sadigon and everything that uh, we saw in Rav Sadigon, the Ibn Ezra quotes here briefly. But then he quotes a different opinion. The Yesh Acherim Omrim, and I think this is Rabbi Moshe Gichitilia, because if you look at various things that the Ibn Ezra quotes uh, from Rabbi Moshe, it fits in with this. And he says, Ki ein There's no prophecy in, in Sefer Tehidim. In other words, he says the exact opposite of Sadia Gon. Tehidim is not prophecy. It's prayers and songs composed by man. It's, it's not prophecy. Okay? So he says, is composed by somebody who is sitting in Bavel, because according to this opinion, this approach, there is no prophecy in Sefer Tidi. It's all prayers, it's all words of man. Okay? In other words, he says, it's very interesting. If you look at the Mizmorim, which are attributed to Bnei Korach or Bnei Heiman, they are very powerful and difficult mizmorim, which seems to have been said by somebody who was an exile. Okay, if you, if you take a look at some of the mizmorim, like things like Mimbet or Mimdavid, I don't remember which one specifically, but it, it sounds like they were say, say, uh, said by somebody in exile. So he says, contrary to the previous opinions, these weren't Leviim in the times of David. It wasn't the Bnei Korach, the Heiman, the Yedudutun, which are mentioned in Divrei Amim, which were in the times of David. But actually, it's much later. It's their descendants who were in the exile in Bavel. Okay, in other words, according to this opinion, there is no prophecy in Sefer Tehidim. So we have to fit the, the, the contents of the, the Mizmo with when it was said. Okay, Asaf also, if you look at Mizmo and Asaf, it seems to be said by somebody who was in exile. So he says again, it's somebody from the times of Bavel, much later. If you look at Mizmo Peitet, it's really a very striking Mizmo, which speaks about that Hashem has abandoned the house of David and calling to Hashem to return the house of David. So he said it must have been said at a time period of Tzidkiyahu, where you know there was a question on on the house of David. It couldn't have been said during the times of David. Okay, he says, If there's nobody in the title head, that means that the editors of Sefer Tilim, when they put together and they put this Mizmorim, they didn't know who was composed by. They saw it was clearly of good and inspiring quality, so they included it in Sefer Tilim, but they didn't know the author, so they left it nameless. Okay, he says also, Ashreit mi mei derech, right? Mizmo kuf yutet, the longest mizmo, one nineteen. Um, um, it says divrei now min Israel. I look about. He says he was some sort of servant in the the house of the royalty. In other words, based on the content, he he tries to analyze each one. It, uh, Robert asks, how does even Ezra deal with the Talmud and Midrash we learned previously? Again, the Rishonim did not see themselves bounded by what Chazal said regarding who the authors were. Many of the Rishonim they argue. Uh, with Chazar. They, they didn't see themselves as bound by it. You see, Rav Sadiagon did not see himself bound. He claimed that despite Chazar saying it was 10 people, um, it was only one. By the way, this opinion that we're reading now is not the Ibn Ezra's own opinion. It's, it's the opinion of somebody else he's quoting. I believe he's referring to Rabbi Moshe Gikitilia, but uh, it's not his own opinion. We'll soon see his own opinion. But According to this opinion, it's exactly the opposite of Rav Sadigon. There is no um, 
processing Sefer Tidim, and each Mizmor we have to check based on its own words um, who was the author. Now let me give you a case. <laughs> this is very interesting, where it's really difficult. Okay? And this is Mizmor Nun Aleph in Sefer Tidim. Here's this is one where everybody seems to get stuck. Why? Let me show you what happens in this mismo. The title of this mismo is "Lemnatzach Mismo Le David." The voy lav natan an David kasher ba'el b'tsheva. Right. So the title of the mismo is very clearly. David seems to have composed it, and there's a specific time where he composed it, when Natan and Navi came to rebuke him for the sin of having been with Bacheva, Uriah's wife. Okay, and the whole Mizmo is about Tshuva, very nice, Lev Tahol Barali Elohim, a lot of these Psukim we say in Naseret Yemei Tshuva, wonderful. Then you go to the last two Psukim, and you see something very peculiar. It says, Hitiva Birtsoncha Etzion, in other words, there is a prayer to rebuild Sion and to rebuild the walls of Yerushalayim. And then the return of the sacrifices to the temple in Yerushalayim. If this mizmor was said by David when Nathan and David came to Bathsheba, this is before Yerushalayim even existed, okay? David hadn't yet chosen Yerushalayim. Certainly, uh, Yerushalayim hasn't been built yet. So how could we have a mizmo from David Melech praying for the rebuilding of Chomot Yerushalayim? How would you go about answering this, according to the two opinions that we saw, according to Rav Sad Yigon and according to the other opinion that even has recorded? So let's start with the easy one. What will Rav Sad Yigon say? Oh, Robert says the Mismo was extended by a different author. Very good. Okay, very interesting. So you will see that's exactly the two answers that we have here. Rav Sadia Gon apparently will say it was said by David as a prophecy for some later time after Yerushalayim would be built and destroyed and something like that. But the Ibn Ezra here quotes the opinion, which I think is exactly what you have to say. Um according to the opinion of Rabbi Moshe, that we don't have prophecies in Sefer Tilim. And he quotes here, the Ibn Ezra in his commentary, he says, answers. The second answer is what apparently Rav Sadigon would have to say that it was said in some sort of prophecy. But he said, I think this is Rabbi Moshe, that these two verses, a Hasid who was in Bavil, who was praying the Mizmor of David Melech and was inspired by the Mizmor of David Melech, because David Melech says, In other words, David Melech was saying that the sacrifices to God are my broken heart. And this Hasid was sitting in Bavil, and that's all he had, a broken heart. He couldn't offer sacrifices because he didn't have the Beit HaMikdash. So he was inspired by this, and he added two verses that said, also, we would actually like to have Beit HaMikdash rebuilt so we can actually offer sacrifices. So he prayed, In other words, and he added these two verses onto the Mizmor of David. Okay? So we see it's, it's fascinating, but that's what you have to say according to this opinion. If we, if we follow the opinion, there is no prophecy um, in Sefer Tehilim. It's all prayer. Then sometimes we even have a case where a Mizmo is written than David, but somebody later on added to it like we have in, in this case. Okay, that's, that's what we have to come to according to uh, this view. 
ואיבן עזרא אמסלף, Uh, he, he tries to take a uh, a little bit of a part of in between aspect, and he wants to say that you know time divrakan monim zel kizeh sefer kulon umar beruach hakodesh. Okay, in other words, he says he doesn't. He's not extreme like for San Diego, and that it was all said by David. He allows people even later the David to have said things, or people that even not necessarily every time it says le David it was written. And by David, but he says there is some sort of Ruach HaKodesh, some sort of uh, divine inspiration um, uh, to, to Sefer Tidim, and he, he, more, he sort of more leans to, doesn't want to go as extreme as Rabbi Moshe Gitilia, who said that there is no prophecy in Sefer Tidim, but he wants to say there's more divinely inspired. Uh, the one who sort of develops this, this last approach of Dibyan Ezra, I think, I'll just mention this briefly, is the Marbim. We go to the introduction of the Marbim much later, a commentary on Sefer Tidim. Um, he says, he has here an interesting piece where he addresses um, you know, all the criticism that was on who composed Sefer Tidim, but he basically says it was Tfilot that were composed by people, and he agrees that it was also people that that wrote things in Galut Bazel, much later times in uh, in Shuvah Shem Shiva Tzion, also in the times of the Second Temple. He accepts all that, but he says it was still, even though it was prayer said by man, it was prayers that were people who still had some sort of divine inspiration, some sort of Ruach Hakodesh, and they were composing these prayers in order to give us words that we would be able to pray with. Okay, so. He does accept the opinion that it is prayers. He does accept <laughs> the opinion that it was also said by people much later than David, and he, he does accept the, uh, the the context of the prayers as an indication that it was said by people uh, who were in exile in Bavel, and they were speaking about the exile, they were speaking about the destruction of Beit HaMikdash, people who were speaking about the redemption of the times of the Second Temple, mm -hmm. But he says it's limited to that time. Why? Because if it was put in Tanakh, then it must have been also, it can't be just prayers that were said by people, you know, completely on their own. There must have been some sort of Ruach Hashem that inspired to say to put these prayers. And then they are the ones that enable us now to use uh, these prayers. So just to sum up uh, briefly, the different approaches that we have, we have on the one extreme, we have Rav Sadiagon who claims that it's all written by David, it's all prophecy. Um, and to some extent, that seems to be one opinion in Chazal of the Gemaran Baba Bata that says it wasn't exclusively David, but it was completed by David. The other approach to the other extreme, uh, which is Rabbi Moshe Gikitibia, is to say there is no prophecy at all. It's all just the words of man praying to Hashem. It's all words of man. It's a unique book of that would be in the Tanakh in that regard. And each Mizmo, we have to decide based on its contents who composed it. And sometimes we'll even break. Uh, we'll have to break off a few psukim and say they were composed by somebody else other than the main author of the text. And then we have some sort of middle more opinions like the Malbim, possibly the Ibn Ezra, that accept the fact that it's prayers, accept the fact that you have to, to some extent look at the context and based on that determined who authored it, but it's not just prayers that were said completely independently. There is some divine inspiration in the prayers, and they were put there to enable us uh, to be able to pray as well and find in Sefer Tirim, what we can connect to and what will fit to the prayers that we wish to say. Okay, does anybody have any questions or comments on uh, this whole issue? Uh, Robert? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, according to the Ebenezer, Ezra, which is, it requires the least, um, you know, uh, uh, divine inspiration, you know, it, it, it's the most yeah. uh, historical, perhaps most factual, less, most rational view. Right. What what gives the, a particular when when we when we redacted or who redacted Sefer to Hilim, maybe is, is the question I should be asking. So, you know, if you say it's all David and Melech, it's nice and simple, you know, it, it, right. you this book and the Chachamim looked at this book when they, you know, when when they chose what should go into Tanakh and uh, they said, yeah, it's written by David and Melech, was divinely inspired. Therefore, it, it's a, it has value. It should be part of the, the canon and so on and so forth. 
you know, right. but, it, but if it was if it was written by Plony, you know, one was written by Plony Almoni over here and some other religious guy over there. So w- what basis did it did who, who redacted it to, to create the safer as a whole uh, before it then was included in the Tanakh? Because you, you kind of leaves you um, um, it, it leaves you, you know, with lots of leaves you with this question. You know, I mean, why were other things not included? Who Who, who got to say what was in and what was out? Right. Well, we know, I mean, we don't really know how it happened. I mean, we generally usually attribute it to what we call in Sheikh Nisset Agdullah, right? Which was that, that they were sort of the ones that decided what would be part of the canon and what would not be part of the canon. We know that they, even they had some, Hazar brings some disputes regarding certain books, whether they should have been included in Tanakh or not, uh, like regarding Shira Shirim uh, and others. So... I mean, according to that opinion, Rabbi Moshe Gidehira, he says they don't they didn't even know who authored some of the Mizmorim, and that's why the ones that they left blank is because they didn't even know who they authored them. But on the other hand, they thought it was of good quality, so they put it in. Again, according to according to this opinion, it's not so bad. Why? Because it makes it very interesting. It's not prophecy. It's not claiming to be prophecy. It's all words of man. But on the other hand, you're right. Once it was put in part of the Tanakh, it gives it you know, a very, a very high uh, stature, so... Yeah, but I think we have to say then that people were saying it, you know, they were familiar with it. How did they hear about it? People were reciting. It became yes. generally used in Tefillah. Otherwise, you know, you could say a prayer and next next day you say a different prayer and it disappears. So the fact that, yeah. that, that we, 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 we choose to record it suggested that lots of people were saying it, doesn't it? I don't know. It were, yeah, of course. I mean, look, if you want to compare it to, again, the Havdi, it wouldn't be exactly the same. But if we take a look like at our book of Keynote, right, it's a compilation mm. of, of, of things that were written by different people over different eras. And it was all assembled together to somehow have the, you know, the the book that we recite. So these things were composed, they spread. And at some point, somebody put it all together. Again, this um, at, at some point, it must have been, according to this approach, sometime in the Second Temple, that somebody collected all these prayers from over many generations. Again, a lot of them were from David. There's no disputing that. But a lot of them also much later, like from people during the times of the exile, from people during the times of the redemption and you know put them all together and you know they then they canonized it and that's it again we don't know we we call it generally unshakeness but we don't know i mean they there was clearly in tanakh even in other books which are much earlier there was some editing done we have some like you just take a look at the psukim at the end of sefer kohelet for example whenever kohelet was there was some later editor that added some verses at the end, and uh, in other books of Tanakh as well, we can see the works of some editors that added verses here and there. So we 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 do have that. We know that there was some sort of unnamed editing that was being done on, on other books of Tanakh as well. Interesting. On TV, obviously, it would have been, need to be something much more substantial than, than just a few verses here and there. Thank you. Yeah, very interesting. Okay, anything else? Yes. Yes. And I am so for Rav Sadia Gaon in in his conclu in his uh, it is the purpose. So for him the purpose is not prayer, it's prophecy. For him what? For 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 uh, the purpose. The whole What's purpose the... of the Mismorim. The purpose of the Mismorim. Oh, the purpose of purpose. the Mizmorim. The purpose of the Mizmorim is educational, according to Rav Sadia Gaon. It's not meant for us to pray. It's meant for us to study. Rav Sadia Gaon, some claim that Rav Sadia Gaon here was battling with the Karaites, and the Karaites were pushing for all the prayers to be from Tihilim. And Rav Sadia Gaon was pushing back and said, and saying, no, Tehillim is not to be prayed, Tehillim is to be studied. So it could be that Rav Sadia Gaon was some sort of counter to the Karite approach. I don't know exactly how much, uh, whether, you know, how much of that is the, it could be that that's also part of what's behind. But according to Rav Sadia Gaon, he, he would say to you, you study Sefer Tehillim like you study any other book in Tanakh.
Okay. Okay. That's it. Good night, everybody. Yeah, that's over, everyone. Thank you so much, Racham. We really appreciate it. All right. Thanks. Thanks.